Hello, this is the next video in my DevNet Associate series of videos. We're beginning this series of videos learning the basics of Python. Uh, kind of a crash course in just learning Python for beginners because you need to know a little bit about Python if you want to get your DevNet Associate certification from Cisco. So the book I'm using to kind of introduce Python is Python Crash Course by Eric Mathis. And we're on chapter nine which in which he introduces classes and how to create classes. So the chapter covers creating classes and then creating objects where, which are instances of a class. So we can instantiate our class with an object built from our class. Then we can store our classes in a Python file and make that like a module. So then we could import that module into our program and therefore import our classes so that we can create those objects. So let's let's practice doing some of the things that are presented in the chapter. So to do this, I'll use the nano text editor and I'll say chapter9.py and that opens up a file and we'll start creating a class. So I'll say class and then robot. Now the name of our class needs to be capitalized so I used a capital R there and then a colon. So now we have a class. Now the first thing we're going to do in our class is create our init function. So we'll indent and put in def and then double underscore init double underscore and it has to have two underscores and then init and two underscores afterwards. Now this init function will get called automatically and uh, when a robot is object is created from this class this function will get called automatically and it requires a self parameter and then any other parameters that we want to give it like name and age which I'm going to give it and then a colon and now we add some properties so we're going to add some properties so I'm indenting and we'll say we begin with self so in other words this object this class self.name equals the name parameter and we'll say self dot age equals age which is passed in and then we could give it other properties that are not passed in like self dot we'll say routines a robot has different routine routines and we'll say routine starts off at zero so the routines property of the robot will be zero to begin with all right so we have uh, these properties of the robot are called attributes so this is an attribute uh, name age routines those are all attributes okay let's create another function for our robot now this function that we're going to create for the robots called a method so inside of a class we create a function it's a method so we'll say the robot knows how to sit and then we have to pass it self and then maybe just for this sit function right now it's just we'll print something out so not much just printing something and it'll say something like self dot name is now sitting okay great so we have that function and then what I'll do is, is I'll create a couple more so we'll say define walk and also we have to pa pass it the self parameter and we're gonna do the same thing we'll just print something so if this method which is a function gets called all it's going to do is just print something out and we'll say same thing self dot name is walking okay great and let's see here one more so define and we've got a couple more here you know what I'll just copy these this next one and paste it in that way it'll be quicker right so with this one this method number underscore routines print self dot name knows this many routines 
And since routines is zero, it'll, it will, if we call this function or call this method, it should return zero. And then what we could do is, is we could also maybe update our number of routines. And I've got a function here or a method that I'm gonna use for that, and I'll just paste it in here so that it's a little bit quicker in the video. All right. And this one you'll have to type out. So def update underscore routines, the self parameter, and then our teens. So if we call update routines, we could pass it the number of routines, and then we take routines and we turn it into an integer from a string, so it's a number. And if our teens is greater than zero, then we add our teens to our routines and print the name of the robot now knows this many routines. Else if, an elif here, if routines is less than zero, then what we'll do is we'll say self.routines plus equal routines. And maybe I want to put this, yeah. So then we say self.routines, add it to our teens, and then take our teens and change it to an absolute value. So remove the negative sign. So by doing this, I'll take routines, I'll remove the negative sign, and then it'll say the name of the robot now knows one less routine or two less routines because I removed that negative number. So that should, we should be able to either add more routines or remove routines. And if we don't pick a number greater than zero or a number less than zero, else will take effect. Else will take effect and it'll say pick a number greater than zero or less than zero. So that will be the end of our class. So now if we want to see our class, and let's see here if we can get the whole thing to show up here. All right, so there's what it looks like. There's the class. And it has the init function. It has a method called sit, a method called walk, number of routines, and update routines. So now let's, let's use it. So what we can do is we'll say robot1 equals and then we call our class. So robot1 equals robot, and then we can give it the name and the age. So we'll say Z6, and then the age is six. Okay, so that looks good. Now that will create an object named robot1 out of our class. It'll It'll instantiate our class and give us an object called robot1. And now what we can do is we could say print robot1.age or let's say name. And then we could print robot1.age like that. And we should see it. Now, Let's try it out. So we'll say control X to save, Y to save, enter to accept the name, and now let's just run the program and see if it worked. There it is, the name Z6 and the age is six. All right, excellent. So now what I can do is, I'll just get rid of that space here so we have a little more room here to work with. What I can also do is, is I can call the methods. So I could say robot1.sit. Notice I'm using the dot syntax to access the object and then access the method in the object, or to access the object and then access the attribute in the object. So dot name, dot age. All right, so dot sit and then robot one dot and we'll give that a try. Now when we call sit and walk, it should just print out just the, the sentence and, and, and put in the, the name attribute. So let's see if that works. So control X, Y, and enter, and then run the program, and there it is. So the name, the age, and then Z6 is now sitting, Z6 is now walking, and then what we could do is we could create some routines. 
So I'll go in here and I'll say robot one dot, what, what is it, number routines? All right, let's try that. Number underscore routines, which should show up as zero. Then what we'll do is we'll say robot one dot, we'll call the update routines function and we will pass it two routines. So update routine. So should, number routines should start off zero. And then if we update routines and add two, then it would know two routines. So let's give that a try. So control X, Y, and enter and run the program. And Z6 knows zero routines. Z6 now knows two routines. And then I'm going to, once again, we'll just call it one more time and and this time I'll put in negative one and now it should have one less routine so let's see here negative one so control X Y and enter and if the program works Z6 now knows two routines Z6 now knows one less routine so it subtracted the routines. So, so far that's working out pretty nicely. So now that we've learned how to create a class, the next thing that's covered is how to create a child class or the topic of inheritance, how to create a class that inherits the features from another class. So kind of like a subclass. So to do that, we'll edit the file and we'll create a child class. So let's see here, we edit the file and we'll go down here and we're going to create a child class. Now to do this, what we do is we say class, this is gonna be a new class, and this one will be called soldier robot. And then inside we'll put in some parentheses here and to have this class inherit the robot class, you just pass it the robot like that, just like that. So now, class soldier ro robot will inherit the robot class and then inside let's see here we do a function and define and initialize our function just like before and then we need to pass the self parameter and then any other parameters that we want it to inherit so what we're going to inherit here is name and age just like the robot class but we're going to add something different we're going to add let's say weapons so this will be a soldier robot so it'll inherit weapons all right so there is our our init function and then after the init function what you have to do is call the let's see here one two three four and i will indent and I'll call the super function. And the super function allows us to inherit the super class or the, the parent class. So what we do is we call super and then open and close parentheses, then dot and then underscore in it. And basically we initialize the parent class or the super class this way. So then that gets past name and age. And we don't need to call the self here because self this is the soldier rob robot class and then the super function which initializes the parent class so that looks good and and then what we'll do is we'll create another method we'll say def list underscore weapons so we create a function called list underscore weapons we pass it the self parameter which we need and then we'll just print out our weapons so let's see here one two three four and we'll print and with an f string This looks like our class of soldier robot, which inherits the robot class. And we define it here. We call the super function 
to initialize the parent class or the super class, which is robot. And then we also define a method called list weapons where we'll list out our weapons. Okay, now all we need to do is create, create an instance of it. So what we'll do is we'll say, we'll get rid of this and I'll just comment these out for now. And what we'll do is we'll say robot2 equals the soldier robot. And when we call it, we're going to pass it a name. We'll say Chuck 88 and the age which is we'll say five and then we'll pass it the weapons and the weapons we'll say okay the weapons are a laser and maybe a shield and maybe a cannon something like that so name age and then a list of weapons will be the third parameter and that should create robot 2 and then what we can do is we'll say robot 2 dot list underscore weapons and we'll call our method so if this works out we should get and let's also print the name so we'll say print um, robot two dot name okay and then control x y and enter and then we'll run our program and it looks like we're getting an error here okay um soldier robot object has no attribute weapons so let's go back in and we'll see we'll fix we'll fix that okay soldier robot self name age weapons ah we need to we need to give it the weapons so let's say all right in the init function we'll say self dot weapons equals weapons all right that should work Control X, Y, and Enter, and then we'll run it. And there's Chuck88. Chuck88 has the following weapons, laser, shield, and cannon. So you can see that we actually are able to call its name, which is one of the attributes of the parent class, or the super class, robot. And then weapons is part of the child class. It's, it's unique to just soldier robot. So in this case, we now have a class that inherits the previous class, inherits the, it inherits all of the attributes and all of the methods of the parent class. And then soldier robot also has its own methods, which are list weapons. So it has its own uh, attributes and its own methods. Now, the last thing that's covered in that chapter is how to import from um, import classes into another file. So what we could do is we could comment out these, and now all we have is just these two classes, and it's in the file chapter9.py. And so what I could do is, is I could exit and save, and now I could open up a new file. We'll say chapter, we'll say, we'll just call it chapter9 import test.py and then in this file what I can do is I could say something like this from chapter 9 so from chapter 9 which was chapter 9.py import robot and soldier robot so I could import those two classes from the file chapter9.py. And now that I have that, I could say robot3 equals 
soldier robot and I could call it a new name test 52 and age is one year old and it has the following weapons it has a, a double laser and a flamethrower something like that all right double laser and flamethrower just like that and then we could call it robot 3 dot name we want to print that out and we also want to call the method robot 3 dot list underscore weapons so now basically this file imports the class from the other file so now it basically you're creating a module so chapter 9.py equals a module that we're now importing and then we could just run this let's see if it works control x y and enter and then we'll run it and it says uh, I've got a error in my typing so let's open it back up and I forgot the D here perfect control X Y and enter and run it and test 52 has the following weapons double edge so there we've now imported our classes and put our classes in a separate file so that covers basically what's covered in chapter 9